what's going on guys so i haven't actually done one of these in a little while just kind of talking to y'all through my podcast um you know i i'm doing it a little bit differently normally i record gameplay first and then i talk but i kind of just wanted to hang out talk while i game and it'll allow me to be a little bit more freely talk more freely speak more freely you know, there's a lot going on right now um uh, i'm in a lot of conversations with uh jesse bell development about a lot of different things regarding reactions and just youtube and stuff i don't want to talk about like my struggles all the time because this isn't therapy i go to therapy on thursdays right <laughs> that's not what this is about but i do want to say that um you know uh, there's been a low amount of content coming from me um i'm actually in a better place mentally it's more so just being extremely busy and honestly i'm not getting the endorphin rush that i have been out of these videos and uh or not these videos but the reaction videos in general um uh, i think i was riding the wave initially and now i'm kind of just trying to figure out what's going to give me that endorphin kick right and i think that's something that a lot of us struggle with especially when we're constantly doing our hobbies is how are we going to get that endorphin kick that we've always needed or I always had so I'm searching for that right now I I obviously do want to keep doing uh reactions I want to keep doing this these videos that I love but I have a lot of passion in a lot of other things I mean you know I I grew up <laughs> I grew up a gamer. I grew up in a household that was, uh, well, I grew up two households, but they were actually kind of polar opposites, to be honest. Um, you know, I grew up with my mom where everything had to be clean, pristine, and, uh, just everything need to be in order. Uh, I had strict rules about what I can and can't do at certain times, uh, all this stuff. Uh, and then my dad was a little bit more like lenient with stuff. Especially when it came to like, oh, I'm dead. Especially when it came to kind of my freedom, even as like in elementary school, you know. Um, obviously, I would, I was, I was at a babysitter, so it wasn't like I was running around the town. But you know, if I went to a friend's house, he was cool with me just coming home late and stuff. But my point is, at my dad's, like, I grew up with a bunch of different game systems. So I had the Nintendo. Uh, Super Nintendo, um, I had the N64, PlayStation 1 is kind of when I really got into gaming, um, but I had all of that stuff, and I grew up as a gamer doing, uh, playing video games, and that was my salvation, that was my escape. For a lot of my young, you know, childhood life, elementary school to junior high, kind of. Um, but then, you know, Junior high happened and um, I got a guitar and music became my salvation. But, you know, it's it's I bring this up because I want I have a gaming channel. I have a music channel and this isn't saying, hey, go join it. You should, but don't. It's, it's not what this is about. Um, I want to do a lot of different content. It's not just like gaming content that I want to do. I want to do. Uh, sorry, it's not just reaction content I want to do. I want to do gaming content. I want to do, like, right now I'm waiting to hear back from my Pokemon cards that I went and uh, got graded to make that a video. Like, I want it to be, I don't want to be in one thing. I want it to be, like, I'm sharing my hobbies with you all, right? I think that's the best way to go about this is to uh, share my life with you in a sense. Obviously, like, I'm not going to share every intimate moment with you right like I, i'm not gonna be like hey today at three o'clock i took a shit like we all know that portion but i think it's just it would be cool to diversify um you know we all know reaction content is not gonna be something that we can do permanently and uh i'm gonna get into that in a second but there's a lot of reactions are hit or miss sometimes you can run into somebody who loves them and run into somebody who hates them and uh it all depends on uh 
It all depends on the outlook and their experience with reactions. Uh, sorry, I'm frying right now. <laughs> the main thing about the reactions that, that I've noticed is like, you know, people see TikTok right now. That's everybody's on TikTok, old, young, right? YouTube kind of has its own base for reactions, uh, its own demographic. But TikTok, you have everybody, and everybody's able to post anything on there, really, for the most part. Um, but the reaction there is like somebody doing a duet, right? And then just literally pointing at the duet screen and shaking their head. And that's a reaction. That's technically a reaction, short reaction video, what have you. People see that, and they're like, you're not adding anything. And they think, really, any, any reaction is like that. And, you know, there's some streamers that have caused kind of that that happened too with XQC on Twitch where most of his shit right now is literally reacting to stuff and that's how he's making his money is reacting so um but there's a lot of that I do think the reactors who actually bring something to the table like you know uh Knox brings something to the table uh we have Jesse who is really good at talking about the sound engineering and the mixing and all that stuff and brings his own, you know, his own expertise to the table. He's adding something to the content that kind of transcends the original content, right? And I think that's important. Um, I'm trying to find my way through that. But that's also why I want to, like, diversify is because I don't want to just... If, if it ends up being that, like, reactions are not my thing, which I think I'm doing all right. I don't post a lot is my problem, but... If I end up getting sick of it, which is very possible, because I get I go in waves of things that I like to do. Um, I, I don't want to just be like, well, my channel's done now. I want to be able to have different things, right? Um, but I want to talk about the kind of important thing here, and it's YouTube's sort of, uh, I guess, um, it's a changing of the tides, I guess, for reaction channels and how they're being accepted, right? Um, I don't want it to get in too many, too much detail, but there are a lot of artists now that are being signed to labels that are essentially like their labels are telling them we need to utilize reaction channels for marketing. And it's so far not been a shysty move where, you know, people are getting paid thousands to only promote that band, right? Um, I think there's some of those that are out there, but they're allowed to react to others. But for the most part, I think it's it's pretty cool right now. Um, so there's a lot more kind of independent independent companies that are open to reactors and allowing them to market, right? I do think that's really cool. But the big thing here, right, is there's this whole beef with Kendrick and Drake, and I haven't really been paying attention, to be completely honest with you. Um, I'm not a fan of Drake. You guys know this. Uh, I prefer people who write their own stuff. I don't mind people who write their own stuff with somebody like, you know, Taylor Swift writes her own stuff with somebody. But I do have an issue with people who have ghostwriters, whatever. And essentially, right, those ghostwriters don't get any of the credit. Um, I'm not cool with that. Um, you know, Cliff is technically was is a ghostwriter. So just to put that into perspective, um, but you know, I digress. Kendrick uh, decided that he's going to not copyright his materials for reaction channels, which is a win because he's a major artist on a major label, right? So here's what happens, right? When you have these independent artists that break into the mainstream, they usually follow what the production company says because they're just happy to be there, right? So, you know, it's like I we want to be able to, you know, allow our fans to be how they were before, but we're also part of this label now that's going to assist us and we have to kind of compromise, which is fair. But when it's the, you know, the mainstream artists that are already established, like the Drakes, like the Kendrick Lamars, like the Beyonce's, all that stuff, when they come out and say, hey, I want reactors to be a part of my fan base that helps promote my music, they're not going to say no <laughs> because they're making them a lot of money, right? So that's big. That's a really, really big thing. And I think it's 
I think it's going to be kind of the straw that broke the camel's back in a sense of mainstream companies realizing that reaction channels can be a big thing. Now, this is a double-edged sword, in my opinion. I do think that it could end up being a bad thing if not, you know, used in the right way, right? And um, that's kind of with everything. But like I was saying before, if they decide to, you know... Uh, excuse me. If they decide to take somebody that's basically a plant uh, for the production company and have them do a reaction channel to only artists they want them to do it, they're hired by that production company, all that stuff, that's where uh, it's going to start being a bad thing. Um, but right now, they're utilizing already established reactors and letting them react. And I think that's the best case scenario at the moment. We'll see what happens once we kind of get past that point. Uh, we'll see what happens when more and more companies start doing it. I think that's where we'll have to see how it's going to turn out. But right now, it's a good thing. It's a great thing. Uh, I think that Kendrick Lamar, right, is probably seeing what's been happening with the reaction community with this beef and he's you know he's saying that look at all this uh you know notoriety uh, he already has notoriety i'd say look at all of the like people that are reacting to this and the traction that these reactors are getting because of the this beef right and there's people talking about beef and like talking about the ins and inner workings of each of the the artists like true fans right um I think he's kind of being smart about it and realize, hey, there's something here. Um, so it's a big step. I think it's it's going to be the, like I said, the straw that wrote the cameras back in terms of mainstream companies having to kind of acquiesce to the artists who want this to be, you know, uh, part of their thing where they let reactors do it. You know, Ren has already been doing it. We know this. Um, Falling in Reverse is a big one. Ronnie even will, like, go on Twitch and watch people react to his, uh, you know, songs. Just like Ren does sometimes, but he'll do it often. Uh, so there's a lot of artists already that have been doing this, but they're more so on the indie side. I know Epitaph's kind of like a decently well-known one, but... Um, they're, they're still kind of an independent artist on like the B side of the major label, if that makes sense. So, um, but anyway, it's really cool that that's happening and I'm excited to see the future. But again, I'm still like hoping for the best, but I'm planning for the worst right now because I don't want to be, there's some, I'm not going to name any names, but there's some other reactors and some other content creators that are reactors that are like basically almost homeless <laughs> because they put all their eggs in the reaction basket and now they had this kind of copyright uh, wave where they're demonetizing everybody's channels and they're kind of like scrambling. There's people scrambling and you know, I'm, I have the benefit of this not being my main source of income, right? I have a full-time job, which is part of the reason I can't uh, you know, create videos as much as I want to, but, um, I, I think that I'm benefiting from that in a sense. Um, so I, I don't have the perspective, right? I don't have the thing where like, if this fails, I'm fucked. So of course I'm going to be like, oh yeah, that's, it's crazy that people would put all their eggs in that basket. But I've also had business endeavors that have failed before and I've learned my lesson. So it's all par for the course. I just think that it's really hard to like gauge it. So I always have a backup plan. I have like, I have four or five plans for like business endeavors that I'm trying to work on right now um, that are in inception. So like I haven't started any of them, of course, because I, I don't have the time right now, but I have all these ideas that I want to try 
that I'm eventually, once this project is over at work, we'll try. But I always have a backup to a backup to a backup to a backup is what I'm trying to get at here. So it's pretty crazy that um, I just I feel for those reactors. I feel for those content creators who do get demonetized because the reason they get demonetized for most of most of it is kind of shice or kind of shitty and kind of, you know, <laughs> really a weak reason to, especially considering, wow, 24 and 7. Especially considering that, like, most people are not even, like, deliberately trying to be, you know, have any malicious intent, right? They're just trying to do a reaction and have fun, right? Um, there's a couple, there's a couple channels that I watch, MXR Plays being one of them, where it's literally just them watching TikTok and reacting to TikTok. And it's really, you know, there's personalities that sell it um, but they got fully demonetized on their channel and uh mostly for thumbnails because they do do clickbait thumbnails right i mean they got boobs and stuff on those thumbnails so uh, that one uh, it's like it sucks because that channel is really funny and i do in my down moments like to go to those types of channels to just kind of laugh and feel better but at the same time they were playing with fire right and YouTube's kind of told, he asked what they were, what the issue was, and they, they said thumbnails. So he went back, found all of their thumbnails that could have been an issue and, and changed them or deleted the video. And YouTube essentially said, nope, it was there at some point. It's on your record. We're not going to change your mind. So um, YouTube's definitely, it's weird because I feel like there's two phases to this. And Jesse and I again talked about this, but it's going to get worse before it gets better. But I think the Kendrick Lamar thing will help it get better sooner than expected, right? Um, he's not the only artist, but he's the most recent artist I can think of that's done that. Um, but you know what? Uh, back to kind of the diversifying content thing. Um, that being said, uh, there will be more reactions than I expected to do coming up just because I was trying to specifically move out of that. But this isn't about content creation, essentially, this whole podcast, but... Um, I'm super into Pokemon right now. Uh, my daughter's into playing the game, so I'm playing that along with her so I can help her along. And I'm enjoying the shit out of it. And I do want to have, you know, hangout streams where we talk about, where we play Pokemon, we talk about Pokemon cards and just have fun with it. And I want to post that on my gaming channel. I want to have, you know, Pokemon content and all that. I basically want to be able to just like post freely without really worrying about what i'm posting essentially um but so that's kind of the content creation portion of of this um you know i i know that a lot of us have wow i know a lot of us have you know our ailments and a lot of us deal with depression anxiety like i do and adhd and a bunch of different things and i'm not the only thing I've been diagnosed with officially is depression and anxiety, right? So I'm not going to come out here and say, oh, I'm probably this or I'm probably that. Um, for two reasons. One, because I think it does a disservice to people who actually know for a fact that they're dealing with that. And two, because I got called out for that, with that, about that before. So, um, but you know, I... I have people in my discord that keep telling me like I'm on the spec. Uh, I'm near a diversion in some way or I have ADHD. I don't know. I have a lot of the tendencies. I'm not diagnosed, so I'm not going to say I am. Um, but I do feel like I have a lot of qualities that match. Um, I, I, I have been going to therapy, like I said, and again, this isn't about that. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be cognizant of everybody around me um, in my personal life and on here, right? Uh, I'm trying to be more open with hanging out with friends or trying to hang out with friends, both virtually and in real life. And I know people are going to say, well, virtually is not even the same thing. I will say <laughs> when you have anxiety, social anxiety like I do, I think it's important to like start somewhere, right? So I think it's important to start with 
the virtual kind of social engagement because you're right it's not the same you don't have facial expressions you have to worry about necessarily or getting dressed your overall manner mannerisms when you're speaking and how you walk how you eat like those are all things that could cause social anxiety right but i do think the virtual thing on facetime or discord or whatever is at the very least a way to be social and not be stuck in your monotonous kind of head that could be honestly it could be brutal uh i've been there and uh the head is not the great place to be for me sometimes so i do think that the virtual stuff is a really important thing to do and uh you know i'm i'm not a therapist i've said this before but i like i, I like to try and be there for you guys any way i can to like help you guys cope with whatever you need to cope with right and if my channel brings you joy that's great if it doesn't that's fine too um but I, i'd like to know like honestly if you're watching this if you're listening to this just leave a comment down below if there's ever been a video of mine that has like helped you through a hard time or something i said or just something that like a video that's made you laugh right if i i've always said even when i had like five subscribers if i can help one person get through their day like then this channel is a success so like that's what i'm going for um and honestly it, it's uh, lately the channel hasn't really been the overall therapeutic uh endeavor that it was when i originally started but it's been very cool and very uh i've been able to see at the very least i've been able to see music in a different way and I think that's crucial and I think that's important. Um, but I also think that uh, I also think that to be reliant on you know uh, my channel to essentially be my therapy is not a, a good thing. And I'm realizing that at this point that was like Kind of my main reason why I was doing my channel at first was besides, you know, trying to help others, which is always the main reason it was, this was therapeutic for me. And lately it hasn't really been just because, well, for one, there's not a lot of rent content left for me to do. <laughs> uh, but also like, it's become kind of monotonous to be honest. And it's not so much that, um, you know, that, I don't like it it's more so that you know sometimes you have to switch your life up to get that endorphin fix uh that you truly want and that's where i'm at right now you know playing playing video games right now gives me my endorphin fix more than you know doing these reaction videos are and i think it's more so like i don't have time to do it and that bums me out. So then I, even when I do have time to do it, I don't want to do it because I know I, I can't put in the amount of time I want to put into it. Right. Um, but anyways, I keep going back to the content creation. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of you out there that honestly always posts awesome stuff in the comments, uh, in the discord. And I, I do appreciate it. Um, I'm a big fan of community <laughs> and um, whilst the community right now on Discord specifically is, is very small, um, I, I, I enjoy that. I know that like I can kind of bounce things off, bounce things off you guys and you'll be honest with me, you know, and I have kind of a, a group of like three or four people that I can bounce ideas off of and they'll tell me yes or no type of thing. Um, but I, um, I enjoy where this is, where this is going and I've had doubt, I've had moments of doubt, you know, where I'm, I'm seeing people who started like three months ago and already are at like 50,000 subscribers. And when you start looking at the numbers, man, that's where it ends, but you know, I'm I'm grateful for all of you guys that hang out, and even if you're listening to this, that's 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 great, you know. Um, but 
yeah, I think... I honestly think the hardest part right now for me, again, is mentally I'm pretty... I'm doing pretty well, but the stuff that I do need to work on, like, in therapy and stuff, is really hit me hard. Um, you know, I'm supposed to be... I'm supposed to be writing, essentially, a, like, a letter to my wife that I'm going to um, basically read to my therapist of stuff that, like, I'm apprehensive to say. And it's not like I'm scared of her. It's more like I'm not used to being able to speak my mind and, like, not think about every single, uh, every single, like, bad result right i never think of the good results it's always well yeah but what about those bad results right like what if i tell her something and it pisses her off so much that and that's the thing it's always what if i say or do this thing that pisses her off so much that it's unforgivable right and honestly i'm not gonna go into detail because i don't even know what i'm right yet but all of it's valid right like and none of it's anything she's doing wrong it's me having to work through my own demons of, you know, past traumas with when I was living with my mom, um, which <laughs> I'm learning now is a bunch of craziness. Um, you know, I, you know, second guessing everything, everything is a big deal. I don't want to argue in fear that that argument leads to you know, the worst case scenario, right, of a divorce or whatever, like, I, I, I can't handle it. Uh, I can't. So instead of like talking through things most of the time, I just, you know, I kind of uh, go silent and freeze and my wife hates it. So it's, it's counterproductive and I need to figure it out. But I need to figure out a way of like expressing myself without causing myself to panic in a way that she'll understand, right? So that's kind of something I'm working through. And it's honestly as maybe as much of a cop out as it might sound like that's taking up a lot of my energy trying to figure that out. And maybe that's why I'm doing this, right? I'm playing video games uh, on my free time when I have free time instead of recording or ri actually writing that goddamn letter is because I'm trying to escape that reality. I think we all have kind of the escapes, right? I think there is a lot of different types of people, but also if I'm going to relate it to gaming, because that's what we're talking about right now, I think there's a lot of different types of gaming people. There's those people that kind of play video games for all of the reasons that I'm going to talk about right now. And, you know, there's a type of person who games to escape reality and that's why they're addicted to it. Because that's the only time they feel like they're sane. That's the only time they feel like they can feel accomplished. And there's a person who games because it's fun and they have, it's a way they relax and that's the way that they enjoy themselves. Um, I think those are the three main ones. I, I think I'm more of the first, which is in all, all of them. I think at times I game because I feel like that's when I'm most productive. You know, I'm I'm pretty decent at most video games, right? I have the the controller dynamics down, I have the muscle memory down. Um so I enjoy doing it. I I have fun doing it. It's actually a way for me to relax. Playing those Pokemon games are a way for me to relax. But then I also feel like I game to escape when I'm super stressed out. And I feel like that is the reasoning for so like when i'm gaming like right now playing call of duty it's totally a different feeling than when i'm playing pokemon or animal crossing or you know any of those things right the competitive stuff is to feel accomplished it's to escape reality it's to worry have a have a small goal to go through right like we have challenges here every week to go through and um you know, it's, it's, that's what it's about. And, um, I think when I play Pokemon, it's like I said, to relax, to kind of defunct from the day, to de-stress and to just like have a relaxing, uh, moment. Right. 
it used to be movies for the longest time and i was a big like that's why how actually how i got into reaction videos was through movie reactions um when the venom was coming out i like went down the rabbit hole of reactions and that's where it all started um and i just love people breaking down like what does this mean what could this be in the trailer is that going to be in the movie like all that stuff was super enticing to me and um that's what i did i i, I ended up getting addicted to uh reaction videos that way um but i think i'm kind of an all-encompassing thing and i i think that's where it can get tricky right with with this stuff is like am i doing this because i actually want to doing this or am i doing this because i don't want to do something else or i'm too afraid to do something else and that's kind of what i'm trying to figure out and that's kind of what's going on i think with me making my album the original goal was to have my album out by june i have one song completed i have one i'm working on that i'm actually really excited about but i took such a long break from it that i honestly don't remember what the idea was <laughs> So like, even when I listen to it, I have to relearn the chords because I don't remember what chords I did for that one. Most of the other ones I've been writing the chords down, but I'm afraid of like, I'm such a perfectionist, right? Like I analyze music on my channel, not to get back to content creation, but there's a point to it. I analyze music on my channel. And if I talk shit about an artist, you damn well better hope that I can, you know, do what I'm talking shit about, right? Now I don't get paid to do it I'm not a professional musician by any means, but I still think that there's some humility that needs to go into it. Like you can't judge somebody else for something you are also bad at. So I think that puts more pressure on me. Like when I release this album, it's like, well, look at this guy. He can't even, that was horrible. Look at this guy. He can't even you know, write a song and he's getting on people who can't write their own stuff. So I'm a perfectionist. And when I, start writing these songs and I don't like anything like one simple aspect I start to give up and I just move on to something else so for the longest time right I've spent three months writing that lo-fi song which honestly in hindsight is not the greatest <laughs> it's very repetitive but it's my starting point and I'm going to leave it on the album because it's my first ever song that I wrote by myself that I recorded that I had the idea for and um you know i'm proud of that part of the journey and this album is going to be my journey into writing music that's why it's an ep why most bands do eps it's their journey into finding themselves as an artist and that's what this is but i'm too afraid to keep doing it because i'm too afraid that i'm gonna write something that i absolutely despise and then the one thing that i so love to do which is you know writing songs is or writing music or be part of music and I'm going to be bad at it. And then what am I good at then? If I'm not bad at, if I'm not good at that, what am I good at? So it's, it's one of those things. Um, it's also why I haven't like tried to relearn the guitar is because I took such a step back with not playing for six years. Once my daughter was born that like if I, when I start doing exercises and stuff and I can't do it as quick or get learn as quick as I want to it just discourages me so much and you know I'm not I know I'm not alone with that I know a lot of you guys are like that I'm sure with different things right but for me it's just like I feel like even at my job like I'm really I'm really prideful and I will do all the research that needs to be done to figure something out or to do what I need to do but that's kind of where it stops I'm not really one of those people that like drives like I would be really bad at a sales job because it's very competitive right and every time you're doing a sale you have to be cutthroat you have to want to do more and and uh I just I want to do a little bit more than the bare minimum at my job to get through it because in my experience right the responsibility you're asked to have for how much you get paid, especially out here in California, it's never enough. Um, very rarely do you find a job that has everything, the whole package, right? Um, what do you call it? Uh, pension, full benefits, and you're like paid for what you do at a comparable rate. You, you don't really get all of those together. 
Um, I had that for a little while when I was temping at Stanford, uh, but I was because I was a subcontractor. So basically they're paying me. Well, they're paying the company I subcontract through like three times more than I was getting paid. So essentially I costed them as much as the CEO, right? And I wasn't getting paid anywhere near that. So I don't want you guys to think that at all, but because I was a subcontractor for that three months, I was getting paid or I was costing the company a lot of money. Um, but that was the only time really that I was kind of paid for what I was worth. Cause I was a manager at that point. Um, but, uh, so I've never been one of those people that like work as hard as you can do as much as you can. And you know, it'll come to you cause it never is true. Instead, what I do is I'm tactful about what I do and the classes I take and what I focus on, right? You don't need to focus on everything and try to be good at everything because then you're only going to be good at some things and mediocre in others. So I try to be as good as I can be at the thing that's most important at the time it's I'm working on it, right? But after that, as long as my work's done and I'm done on time or early, I'm happy. And that's kind of how I am except for when it comes to this music stuff when it comes to this music stuff it has to be perfection it cannot be anything less and I think part of that has to do with well part of it all of it has to do with how I was raised at my mom's house where not just me but like everything everything that we do and the whole house had to be in perfect condition right my mom was one of those people where you had to basically clean the house before the maid came, right? And I had to put a blanket on the couch to sit on the couch. I had to take my shoes off, you know, and none of that's like traumatic at all. I'm just saying perfection there, right? And I would be called, and I'm not trying to trauma dump at all. Oh my God. Uh, but, you know, I would be called an idiot or a dumbass if I did something wrong, right? So I, it got ingrained in my head that I need to be perfect at everything that I do to even get a little bit of praise. So that's kind of why, one of the reasons that I'm so hard on myself about so many different things. Um, and again, it's, I don't think it's 100% that, but I do think it's a lot of that. And um, I think that's something I definitely need to work on. Matthew Willing, I have to be willing to work on it. I have to be willing to make those changes in my life. And I think when I'm in therapy, I'm so open to making those changes and I'm so open to talking about them and being vulnerable. And as soon as I turn off that, that, you know, that zoom, I go back to being recluse. I'd be, go back to putting up my walls. I go back to all of that. And it's not allowing me to grow and to allow myself to be like, Hey, fly. You need to stop trying to be a perfectionist. Put out that song you want to put out. Get to as close of a final product as you can. Listen to it. If you don't like it, then build from there. Don't stop when you hit one hurdle and think of it as a failure immediately just because you failed right away. There is a spider on my microphone and I'm about to freak out. It's a little tiny itty bitty red spider. I'm going to try and kill it. I don't know if I killed it or if it's crawling on me. It's like super small. But in any event, yeah, I, I just need to follow through. I need to not worry about. I'm trying to get to the final product at every step instead of taking the stepping stones to finally get to that final product. I think it's about the perspective. I think it's about different things. And again, this is not to trauma dump this is not to talk about my ailments but more so if you can relate to it and know the kind of struggles that i'm going through and how i'm trying to fix that hopefully it helps you guys um but yeah uh you know i i i have all these ideas i want to do for the channel i have all of these ideas i want to do for videos i have all these ideas i want to do for music but then I start to do it, I hit a hiccup and I stop and I give up and, you know, I'm not one of those people that gives up on stuff I love to do. 
but if I love it a lot, I'm talking like so in love with it that I can't live without it. If I fail at that thing, it's like the end of the world and it's panic. Panic ensues and that's when, you know, the what I'm doing now is is my coping mechanism is just, well, fine, I'm going to play video games because I know I can accomplish something just by playing, just by sitting here and getting points, staying stagnant. I'm going to accomplish something. I'm going to hit some type of goal that the game has set out, right? But like, that's my escape. That's my coping mechanism. That's a lot of different things. Um, so I realized that. Now, what am I going to do to stop that, right? And that's kind of where I'm at right now is how am I going to allow myself to get out of that mentality and allow myself to just make the changes that I need to make that I need to make. Uh, and that's the struggle I feel like everybody goes through that has, you know, self doubt or whatever you want to call it. Um, as horrible. And I think, again, I think it's helpful if you have somebody to lean on. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who Theo Vaughn is. He's actually a comedian, but lately he's been doing a lot of like kind of mental health podcasts with a lot of different people. Um, and I don't remember exactly how he said it, but he said something like he, he knew that he had a lot of people that were there for uh, that were there for him but they weren't there with him. Something like that. I got to find, I, I don't have it on. Again, this is off the cuff, so I, I didn't like prepare anything, but um, it was something along those lines. And um, uh, but I, that really hit me, man. It's like, yeah, you can have friends that are there for you, but um. Are they actually there trying to support you and help you, right? And for me, I don't have either. And that's my own doing because I I have a thing about separation anxiety with the people I enjoy being with, right? My wife, my kids, and like one or two of my really good friends. Uh, you know, Greg, my really good friend, even though we live three hours away, I'm always trying to keep in touch and do what I can because don't want to lose that dude. Been through a lot with him. Um, but I'm afraid of losing those people. And I know that feeling. So instead of going out and making new friends that could possibly be helpful in healing and understanding, I closed myself off and just the best I'll do is a virtual friendship, right? Because at the end of the day, I know that if I disappear, or if they disappear, it's because, well, hey, they weren't actually my friend, real friend. They're, they're a virtual friend. They have a life. I can't expect them to always be there at any give, given beck and call, right? Um, and for those of you, by the way, that are actually my really good virtual friends, that might not necessarily be true for you. I'm just generalizing here a little bit. Um, you know, this is a, for all of you guys that kind of, hang out in the comment section in the streams and uh on discord like this is a v v parasocial relationship right like i try to st stay away from saying things like i love you guys or things like that not because i don't appreciate you guys but that's when you get into this thing where you're starting to act like i'm trying starting to act like my supporters or my community is one person and one being when that's a really unhealthy place to be at, you know, it's a really unhealthy thing to do. And um, I'm trying to stay away from that. There's a lot of streamers too that, whether purposefully or not, really do kind of allow those parasocial relationships to happen because, you know, it helps their community. <laughs> it helps them gain people. I don't want to do that. I want to be real with you guys and like understand that I appreciate everything that you guys do for me and the channel and all that stuff, knowing full well that we are complete strangers and we don't know each other, right? Um, but at the same time, that doesn't mean we can't 
be helpful to each other in some way, right? You know, sometimes somebody's saying like, hey, I heard what you said in this video and, and you know, uh, just take it a step at a time, whatever. Like sometimes hearing that from an outside source could be extremely helpful. And that's why when people tell me like, oh my gosh, what you said in this video, like uh, my crutch video still to this day, people say, I, I feel your pain. Like we all go through this and, and seeing you kind of be vulnerable has helped me, blah, blah, blah. Like all of those things really, really mean a lot. Um, not just in my own healing, but like in wanting to keep doing this. So, um, anyways, I've been rambling for 45 minutes, so I think I'm going to call this again. These are kind of just off the cuff. Talk about what I want to talk about. There's a lot of stuff that I sort of want to talk about. Um, but I think this is good for now. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do one of these weekly just so that way you guys can hear my ugly ass voice <laughs> no uh i want to do this weekly because i like having these kind of conversations with myself <laughs> with you guys um and you guys for all you know i could be doing this with my pants off you don't know all right i'm i'm, I'm losing it all right uh i appreciate you guys for always hanging out and listening and appreciate the support uh yep that's it and uh please do remember that good vibes are contagious